We know that in all things you are faithful. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we have come that we will pray. We ask that in this meeting, this evening, you will enable us by your grace to pray as you expect of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you celebrate the name of the Lord as you take your seat this evening? You are welcome to our midweek service. I'm glad that you are part of this service. Those of you who are here physically present and those who are part of the service online, I know the Lord will surely bless you. Can you say amen if you believe that? This evening, we'll be discussing the topic, Divine Agenda, and also we'll be praying that the year 2021, only the agenda of God will stand in our lives and families. Yeah. Say that amen if you believe it. Yeah. Declare that wherever you are part of this service from, say, in the name of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. this year, only the divine agenda of God will prosper over my life and my family. Don't say it with a heavy heart. Say it with a heart of faith. Say 2021 in my life and family only the divine agenda of God will stand. If you believe that, say good day, amen. This evening, I'll be teaching with the topic, Divine Agenda, and then we will also pray. Isaiah 46, verse number 10, is my main text. Isaiah 46, verse number 10. It says, I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come. In other words, what has not come yet, but I will make it known. And he said, I say, my purpose will stand. And I will do all that I please. Note this evening that the word purpose there also means God's agenda. Touch yourself again and declare that over yourself. Say, this year, only the agenda of God for my life and my family will stand. If you mean what you said, say, good amen. Isaiah 46, verse number 10, revealing to all this evening, God speaking said, Before anything will come into reality, God said, I will make it known. God is an awesome God that he knows the end from where? From the beginning. And it's not only that he knows the end, he also reveals the end from where? From the beginning. In other words, how this year, 2021, is going to end, God has already revealed it. For us, as a church family, it's our year of dominion. It's our year of what? Dominion. It's our year to reign as king. So, the year 2021, according to God's agenda, is not a year of wretchedness. It's not a year of misery. It's not a year of shame. It's a year of royalty. Touch yourself and say that strongly with faith. Say, it's my year of royalty. It's my year of, royalty. It's my year of glory. It's my year to reign. Now, how come we are so sure? Because we have the God who is the Alpha and the Omega. He reveals the end from where? From the beginning. So, how your life journey is going to end has been settled by God. And Jeremiah 29 verse number 11 clearly told us that the plans that God has for us, they are what? Of good and not of evil. So when you look into your future and you look at this season that you are in, what are you expecting? Only what? Only what God has planned. And that is what? The thought of good and not of what? Of evil. And he went for that to say, my purpose will stand. Lift up your right hand, every family represented and those who are part of the service online in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare this evening that only the purpose of God will stand in your life. Yeah. This evening we'll be looking at what is divine agenda. What is divine agenda? And also how to know God's divine agenda? Because it is one thing to say, this year God's agenda or God's divine agenda will stand in my life. What is that agenda? How do you know what God's agenda is? And then, finally, this evening, before we pray, the path 
to experience God's divine agenda. You can be a Christian, yet you are not experiencing God's divine agenda. And there are many who are living their lives without experiencing and manifesting what God's divine agenda is for them. So how do I experience what God's divine agenda is? Can you say amen? amen. Very quickly, what is God's divine agenda? What is God's divine agenda or what is divine agenda? Divine agenda simply means God's established or ordained plan and purpose for his people, a family, in a season or time, or in a generation. God's divine agenda, or divine agenda means God's established or ordained plan and purpose for his people, a family, in a season or time, or in a generation. Let me simplify what that means. God's divine agenda simply means what God has ordained to do. What he has planned to do in the lives of his people, in a particular family, in a particular time or season, or in a generation. Can you lift up your right hand as I pray this in the name of Jesus? What God has ordained to do in your life and your family this year, we stand. Amen. Let me pray it again. It's only what God has ordained in the name of Jesus to do in your life and your family, in your children's life, that we stand this year. Amen. Isaiah 46 told us that. He said, God makes known the end from where? From the beginning. He said, from ancient times, what is still to come? In other words, what has not yet happened? God will reveal it. And he said, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. A version says, God will do all that he proposed. God's divine agenda is that which he has ordained according to his plan and purpose for your life, for your children, for your siblings, for your organization, in a particular season. Can you lift up your right hand? This season, God has not ordained it for us as a season of money. Yeah. I'm going to declare it again. This season is not a season of tragedy. Yeah. I'm going to pray it again. This season for you and your family is not a season of losses. Yeah. It's a season of experiencing what God has ordained. Yeah. Matthew 26, verse number 24a. These are the words of Jesus. And he said, the son of man, referring to himself, we go just as, it has, just as it is written about him. In other words, just as it has been ordained about him. Just as God has established it concerning him. Lay your hand on yourself and declare this strongly and with faith in your heart. Say, my life, my life. We, go. we go as God has ordained it to be. Touch yourself again and declare it. I know you already prayed by that declaration. Say, in the name of Jesus, 2021, my life and everything about me, we go as the word of God has said it. Can you say amen? Psalm 14 verse number 6 says, you evil doers, do everything you can to try to frustrate the plans of the poor or the plans of God's people. But in the midst of your evil deeds, the Lord is their refuge. The Lord is their hiding place. 
Let me pray that this evening, whatever the agenda of the evil one is against your life this year to frustrate you, to manipulate you, to work against you, to humiliate you, it will not prosper. Amen. Whatever those plans are to work against you this year, in the name of Jesus Christ, it will not prosper. And that is why we are here to pray. He said, you evildoers, please tonight know that there are evildoers. Who are evildoers? Those whose assignment, whose mission, whose intent is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He said, you evildoers, do your worst. Do whatever you plan to do against what God has ordained. But God is their refuge. Lift up your right hand. 2021, God will be your hiding place. Yeah. Now, how to know God's divine agenda? How do I know what God's agenda is? I'm led to pray this for someone. I don't know whether you are part of the service online or you are here physically present. I want to pray that any tongue that have risen against you this year, that have spoken evil over your life and your children, every evil imagination against you in whatever form, I stand on this altar this evening and I declare this in the name of Jesus, it shall not prosper. Yeah. Balaam told Balak, he said, how can I curse those God has blessed? 2021. I declare this in the name of Jesus. Every tongue that will rise up against you in judgment, I call them. Yeah. Every weapon factioned and forced against God's divine agenda, it shall not prosper. Yeah. How to know God's divine agenda? One, by the word of God. Someone shout that. In Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5, the Bible said the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. As you hear God's word, God's word reveals to us the agenda of God. It is by the word of God that we discover that it is God's utmost desire that we prosper Enjoy good health, even as our soul prospers. So when sickness comes against my body, by the word of God, I can take my stand and say, you sickness, you are not part of God's agenda for my life. Now, how do I know that? By the word of God. The same word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am here, so sickness, Kalo Shataba, you have no part in my body. In fact, the word of God says that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it is by God's word that we know God's divine agenda. Two, through the promise or promises of God. By the promise of God, we know what God's divine agenda is. Are you still there? Yes, sir. The promise or the promises of God for us, they are good. Amen. God has promised to do us good and not evil. Amen. So when evil comes against me, I take my stand and say, you evil, you are not part of the promises of God. Are you there? Yes, so I come against you in the name of Jesus. Are you there? Yes, in Genesis 32 verse number 9, we are told that Jacob prayed. Now, he prayed because as he was on his way going back to his people, he was told that his brother, whom he had had issues with, were coming to kill him. Are you still there? Yes, so he became afraid and went to God in prayers. And hear what he prayed. Genesis 32 verse number 9. Then Jacob prayed. Jacob did what? Pray. And he said, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, then you said what? You said to me, Kalo Shadaba, lift up your right hand and declare this strongly, say this year, this year. what you have said to me, 
is what we stand. What your word has said. Your promise is what we stand in my life, in my family, in my marriage, in my career, in my head. Say amen. Let me pray this for someone this evening. Your head will not fail. See how Jacob approached God. Oh God of my father Abraham. God of my father Isaac. This is what you said to me. This is what your word said to me. Amen. Amen. Now what is it that he said? Go back to your country and your relatives. And I will make you prosper. You didn't tell me that as I go back I will die. Lay your hand on yourself and declare. They said the promises of God. We prosper in my life and my family this year. Don't say it like you are not very sure. Say it prophetically over your life. Say this year, only what God has promised that we prosper in my life and my family. What do you say to that? A good amen. So Jacob went to God and said, God, this is not what you told me. You didn't say I will die in the hand of Esau. You said as I go back, you will prosper me. So by the word of God, the agenda of God is revealed. How to know God's agenda. Three, by divine revelation or revelation by the Holy Spirit. Somebody say revelation by the Holy Spirit. God reveals to us his agenda by his spirit. We know God's agenda by revelation. It was by revelation that Joseph knew what God's agenda is for his life. That is why as a married woman, you are not bothered even though the children had not yet come. Are you there? The children hadn't come yet. You believe that you are a joyful mother of what? Of children. How do you know that? Because God will reveal things to you by his spirit. You are a tenant. But what you believe and what gives you joy is that you know you will own your own house. Are you still there? You are single. Everyone seems to be consigned. But you are full of joy and hope because you know that your case has been what? Has been settled. I am very certain that that is one of the reasons why Joseph, why, why he was in prison, was not depressed. Because he knew what God had showed him. In fact, he told the court bearer, I'm not supposed to be in prison. In other words, he was mindful of the palace. He said, I'm not supposed to be here. This is not my place. Someone shout, say, by the spirit of God, I know what my future holds. I know what is ahead of me. They are of good and not of evil. So God reveals to us by his spirit his agenda. First Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. It says, however, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived. The things God has prepared for those who love him. Someone shout, God has great things prepared for me. Don't say it like you are not sure. Say, God has great things in store for me. And these things, our eyes have not seen them. Our ears have not even heard them. Our mind has not even conceived them. What God has in store for us. But verse number 10 now said to us, these are the things God has revealed to us. By what means? How many of you have the revelation of God's agenda? Oh, let me ask that question again. How many of you have the revelation of God's agenda for your life? For your family? For your children? For your career? That is why circumstances notwithstanding, I am not bothered. Are you there? Job said, in all these things, I know my Redeemer living. How? Because by the Spirit of God, he reveals to us what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no mind has conceived. But he revealed them to us by what? By his spirit. He said the spirit did what? Searches all things, even the deep things of God. So the things your eyes cannot see. That is why you don't have to be depressed. That's why you don't have to be worried. 
That's why you don't have to be upset. Let the devil do his worst. They may have told us that the year 2021 is going to be a challenging year, but that is for them. I know what God has revealed to me. This year, I am blessed. This year, I am attaining higher height. This year, I'm going forward. This year, I will carry my baby. This year, I will move to my own house. This year, my business will enlarge. And if someone asks you, how do you know? Because God has revealed it to me by what? By his spirit. Another way that God reveals his agenda. Through a word of prophecy. Through a word of prophecy. I can't be depressed. Someone said that. Now, if you don't catch the agenda of God by the word of God, you didn't get it by prophecy. You didn't get it by revelation. You are sure to get it by prophecy. For example, since I started ministering, I have been prophesying. And I don't know who I'm talking to. Are they here? So, by prophecy, God reveals his agenda. 1 Timothy 4, verse number 14. 1 Timothy 4, verse number 14. Hear what Paul told Timothy. He said to Timothy, do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders, the elders that means spiritual leaders, laid their hands on you. Do you know how disturbing it is? When God speaks or tell you things and you prophesy it over someone and the person is not accepting it, no, no spiritual state can be worse than that state. Last Sunday, the word of the Lord came. You received it. Now, this evening meeting, you came depressed. What is the matter with you? Thessalonians says, do not treat, treat prophecy with contempt. The other day, you sat before the man of God, before the woman of God, and a prophecy came. What are you holding not to? What is overwhelming you? Is it the prophecies or the process? A prophecy has come forth. Timothy, don't neglect it because by that prophecy, it has been revealed there is a gift in you. There is greatness in you. Am I right? Prophecy is God revealing his mind concerning an individual through his messenger. At times I look at somebody just depressed, just heavy. That depression can abort God's divine agenda. You just had a little challenge. You are overwhelmed. Raise your hand. You can't raise your hand. You are not talking to anybody. Listen to me. God is not moved by your mood. He's moved by your faith. God reveals to us his agenda by prophecy. For example, in 2 Kings 4 verse number 16a, we are told of a woman who had no child. She was childless. Then she did something that provoked heaven. She blessed the life of the servant of God. Give me your attention. And the Bible said the servant of God entered the room or the house that was built by this woman for him and he was restless and called the person who assisted and said, Gehazi, come. I am not sure I can sleep in this room until I pray for this woman. Until I speak something over this woman. Please call her. Amen. Amen. There's a way you will glorify God, you will honor God and honor his servant. You don't need to ask and say, Pastor, pray for me. The bishop speaking to all yesterday in our minister's conference that ended this morning, he said, some Christians don't know what it means, how powerful it is when the man of God says you are blessed. Is after someone has said you are blessed, you are still coming and say pray for me. It means you don't know the weight of you are blessed. Lift up your right hand. In 2021, you are blessed. Yeah. You will put all that aside, put all of that away and come and say pray for me. What has been said to you? What was that that Jacob said over his sons? He blessed them. What was that that Isaac said over uh, Jacob? He blessed him. When you know the, what was that that God did in Genesis? He said he blessed them. So Bishop said, when the man of God said you are blessed, every cause is eroded. Amen. 
Kaloshalaba. Maritally, you are blessed. Genesis 1.20, the Bible says, God bless them. Lay your hand on your head this morning, wherever you are part of this service. You are blessed by God. Men will bless you. Nations will bless you. Organizations will bless you. Nobles will bless you. Kings will bless you. In the name of Jesus. So Gehazi called the Shunammite woman. And you know, this woman, there's something about her, but that's not my topic this evening. She knows how to honor God and honor spiritual authority. She built the house. She would have just walked in because she built the house. She stood at the door to honor God. You know there are people, when they bless you, you become their boy. But this man or this woman understood spiritual principles. Are you there? Stood by the door and Elisha said to her, Woman, what can we do for you? God is a rewarder. You can't go through all of this and not be rewarded. What reward do you want? What do you want us to do for you? Can we speak to the governor? Hear what the woman said. No, I already have a place among the governor. In fact, we installed the governor. So I have the ears of the governor. So Elisha became confused, wondering what, what can we do for this woman? It's like she's all made. Then she went away. It was after she went away, Gehazi now whispered to Elisha that there's something about this woman. Oh, she has money, she has connection, but there is something missing in her life. She's childless. Wow. She has no child. Say, call her back. I love what the choir minister this evening. Man, what you cannot do does not exist. So they call the woman back. And as in 2 Kings 4, I want to speak something over someone. <laughs> I'm just so, <laughs> it's so strong in my heart to prophesy something over someone this evening. So they call the woman back in 2 Kings 4, verse number 16a. Without any further question, Elisha didn't bother asking the woman, so what is the case? What did the doctor say? What is your head condition? They said what? All of that is irrelevant. When God steps in fact, the angel of the Lord said to Mary, your conception, your pregnancy will not be by any human power. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Lord will overshadow you. And you will conceive. And you will bring forth a child. And that child will not be called the handwork of man. That child will be called the Holy One of God. Are you still there? So as the woman came, stood by the door again, Elisha, child of God, there are prophecies and there are prophecies. There are prophecies that goes with power and faith, backed and rooted with love. So what happened? In, first, in 2 Kings 4, verse number 16, 8, Elisha now said to this woman, we don't know how old she was. We don't know what her health condition is. Maybe she has already passed menopause or reached menopause. I don't know whatever it is. Maybe her womb is dead. But hear what this woman said, what the man of God said to this woman. He said, read with me. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. In other words, you will carry your own baby by this time next year. And it happened. Lift up your two hands. In the next 24 days, Someone will sing a new song. Yeah. By this time next year, you will have accountable testimonies. Yeah. Testimonies of open doors. Yeah. By this time in the next seven years, your children will be mighty around your table. Le shada balada shandala bayada shalaba. By this time, in the next few years, you will have workers working in your establishment. You will be an uncommon employer of labor. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will feed the hungry, you will clothe the naked, you will give home to the homeless. In the name of Jesus. How do I know God's divine agenda? By his word, which is God's word, by the promises of God, by revelation, and by prophecy. Now quickly, before we rise up to pray, lift up your two hands, everyone. For those of you who are having your, your devices in your hand, you can lift up your one, your one hand. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, this year, in your family, in your head, in your marriage, in your womb, in your finances. Amen. Only God's divine agenda will stand. The path to experience in God's divine agenda. One, remain in the will of God. Remain in the will of God. 
John 5 verse number 33b, Jesus said, I have not come to seek my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If you want God's divine agenda to be fulfilled in your life, to stand in your life, remain in the will of God. Are you still with me? It's only in the will of God you will enjoy God's divine agenda. Luke 22 verse number 42. Jesus speaking said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. But immediately he said, yet not my will, but yours be done. So Jesus submitted to God or submitted to the will of God in how many things? In all things. You want to experience the divine agenda of God for your head? God's divine agenda for your marriage, for your business, for your finances, remain in the will of God. Ephesians 5, verse number 17 said, Therefore, do not be foolish, <laughs> but understand the Lord's, what the Lord's will is. In other words, don't walk in ignorance. Know what God's will is and remain there. Amen. Amen. Two, be mindful and confess God's agenda always. He doesn't matter what they are telling us in the news. He doesn't matter what the newspaper is saying. He doesn't matter what the opinions of men are. Amen? Amen. Keep confessing the agenda of God for your life. First, be mindful of it. Then confess it. My children are blessed. We are going forward. We are a lender, not a borrower. My business is doing well. Is that part of God's agenda? And we enjoy good health. Is that part of God's agenda? And we carry my baby this year. Is that part of God's agenda? I am not a barren woman. Are you still here? I spoke to a woman on the phone and I'm sure she's part of this service. You know, over in Europe. I said, start buying baby things. Prepare for where you are going. Prepare for what you are expecting. Amen. Amen. You may have been doing that for 10 years. Keep doing it. Faith has no expiration date. Faith has what? No expiration date. Be mindful of it. If anybody comes to you, people are just sick, people are just dying. Say, well, we'll keep praying for them. Then me, I will not die. Are you there? People are just losing their jobs. Well, me, I will not lose my job. Even if I lose my job, I will create a job. Be mindful and confess what God's agenda is for your life. How many times? Always. Jesus confessed God's agenda. In Luke 18, verse number 33b, he said, but on the third day referring to himself, he will rise again. He didn't fail in, he always will say that, I will rise again. I will rise. They will crucify me, oh. but on the third day, I will rise again. Did he rise? Someone shout this and shout it like you are the only one here. My lifting is sure. My, is sure. My prosperity is sure. My it doesn't matter what is going on in my life at the moment. Doesn't matter what is going on in the nation. I will rise again. I will prosper. I will go forward. I will walk in dominion. I will live a life of royalty. Don't just confess it at the cost of this service only. Confess it always. As you wake up, you are not feeling well. Confess God's divine agenda. I have received good health. My body is not for sickness. I will walk in good health. Are you still there? You want to explain God's divine agenda? Be mindful and confess what God's agenda is. Three, how to experience God's divine agenda. True prayer. True what? True prayer. True prayer. Mark 1 verse number 35. The Bible told us that very early in the morning, Jesus will rise up and go to a quiet place and pray. Why was he praying? We saw in the book of Luke that part of Jesus' prayer was to pray that the will of God be done. Are you still there? At one point we saw that he said, only what God has really concerned him in that way stand. Child of God, you want to experience God's divine agenda? You must be prayerful. Psalm chapter 4 said, you evil doers. There are evil doers. They want to frustrate the agenda of God. Are you still there? Come on, are you still there? They want this year to be miserable for you. That is not what God's agenda is for your life. So you rise up and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever is opposed to God's agenda for my life, I bring it to naught. Psalm 101 verse number 8. It says, 
In the morning, you will hear my voice. Are you following? I will silence the evil doers in the land. Lift up your two hands. All the evil doers around your life and your children's life, I silence them in Jesus' name. Yeah. The evil doers of the year 2021, they are silent in Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus will begin the day with prayers. You want to explain God's divine agenda your business? You must be prayerful. You want God's divine agenda to be fulfilled in your children's life? You must be prayerful. Listen to this. You may not like what I'm about to say now. Not very many persons want you to do well. First in the list is the devil. There are forces that rejoices when you fall. There are forces that, are, that will be okay if your life is the same with them. As long as you move forward, they start calling you names. Why do you think the Bible says every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you should condemn it? What do we mean by every tongue that rises up against you in judgment? You will see how your children will do well. We'll see how this marriage will do well. Lift up your two hands. We're about to rise up and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the year 2031, every evil tongue against your head will not prosper. In Isaiah, he said, they like to pronounce a curse. Did we see what happened? That Goliath was not conquering because of his power alone. The Bible says he cursed David. Stretch your hand toward this altar. Stretch your hand towards your device if you are part of this meeting. Whoever had cursed you this year, that curse will not prosper. Yeah. Whoever had cursed the days, the months of this year for your sake, in the name of Jesus, I reverse that curse. Yeah. Whoever cursed your spouse, that curse is reversed. Yeah. Whoever cursed your husband, that curse is reversed. Whoever caused your destiny, that cause is reversed. Whoever caused your business, that, be, that cause is reversed. You must learn to begin your day with prayers. Jesus will rise up in the morning. Why was he doing that? To take charge of the day. You wake up in the morning. The first thing you are doing is to carry your smartphone and then start. Well, no, 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 no. Jesus began his day. And in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed to a certain place and he opened his phone. He opened his phone. He prayed. He took charge of the day. He took charge of the day. How you begin the day will determine how the day will go. Father, this year, Father, this month, Father, today, it's only your will that will stand. It's only your plan that will stand. It's only your agenda that will stand. Can you say amen? Are you still there? The Bible also told us in Luke 22, verse number 44, of Jesus. He said, and being in anguish, what happened? He prayed more earnestly. And what happened? And his sweat, as a result of his prayers, was like a drop of blood falling to the ground. Why did he do that? That was the strength, or that was the power that strengthened him to overcome. Are you still with me? That was the power <laughs> that strengthened him to overcome. You want to overcome? In the father, father, those cosmetic prayers are not going to work now. He prayed, Father! You know, a woman told me a few days ago, Pastor, amen? amen. My daughter was caught in school, stole from the auntie's bag, purse. Are you still with me? Stole from the auntie's purse. And she was crying. I said, It's not the time to cry. That is not the daughter God gave to you. Something has corrupted her. And I said, Don't condemn her. Instead of condemning her, take side with God. And say, Father, you didn't give me a thief for a daughter. Are you still there? Wherever that spirit came from. Are you still there? Things don't just happen. The Bible says an evil spirit entered. That evil spirit, you don't need to start pointing to her. And say, you evil spirit. She's not evil spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You go on your knees. Perhaps she's not evil there. And when you are done, you call her Cynthia. You know what? You are not a thief. She will be surprised. And when she says amen, she's agreeing with God. Do you know how many parents have pronounced a curse on their children? Your child may behave in a wayward way, but your child is not a wayward child. Yeah. Separate the attitude of your child from the identity of your child. The identity of your child is your child is a noble child. Your child is a blessed child. Your child is someone that brings honor. Are you still there? You know, she, she's very immoral. She's spread. No. Change that confession. Take side with God. And take a stand for your daughter. Take stand with God and take a stand for your daughter, for your children.
for your husband, for your wife, for the nation. Are you still there? He said, I sought for a man that will stand the gap on behalf of Cynthia, but I found none. All that I found is someone who says, Cynthia, you are a thief. Cynthia, you are this. Cynthia, you are that. Are you still there? Cynthia, God, every good and perfect gift come from where? Are you still there? See, my husband is a drunkard. No, your husband cannot be a drunkard. He drinks, but he's not a drunkard. Father, in the name of Jesus, that spirit, are you following him? That makes him to always get getting himself drunk. See, my husband is a gambler. No, your husband is not a gambler. He's a gambler. He gambles, but he will be delivered from it. Are you still there? There's a woman in this meeting, when she came to me, and she was complaining about the husband, I said, pray for your husband. I said, I will pray. I said, if you don't pray, you will suffer for it. And when she began to pray, things turned around. Lift up your two hands. In the name of Jesus, I take a stand with God and I agree with your faith that the year 2021, only the agenda of God will stand in your life. Yeah. Psalm 32, 6 to 7. Psalm 32, 6 to 7. It says, Therefore, let all the faithful do what? Pray to you while you may be found. Surely, the rising of the mighty waters will not reach there. I love that shout up. The mighty water that talks about evil. The mighty water that talks about activities of darkness. It will not reach you. Yeah. The evil waters will not reach your children. Yeah. He said, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with the signs of deliverance. But what should the righteous do? What should the faithful do? They should pray. They should pray. So that when the mighty, because the mighty waters will rise. The evil waters will rise. But when the waters of evil, the waters of sickness, the waters of affliction rises, it will not reach the man that prays. Are you still there? So you must learn to take a stand with God. And that's why we are here. Take a stand with God. Are you following? Take side with God. Take side with God. And take a stand for your family. Take side with God. Don't take side with the evil that is happening. Take side. Take side with God. Agree with God. He said, if I can find a man, if I find two or three shall agree, touching anything, it shall be done. Ezekiel said, I sought for a man who will stand on the gap. The choice is yours this evening. Are you taking side with God? Taking side with the promises of God? Taking side with prophecies? Taking side with the word of God? Taking side with the revelation of God? And you are saying, Father, in my family, in my household, in my marriage, in my children's life, it's only your agenda that we stand. Rise up as we pray. Declare this in the, say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are part of this service, don't stand like you are so tired. Declare, say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I take a stand with you. And I take a stand for my family. That the year 2021, only your agenda will stand. Only your agenda will prosper. Go ahead and begin to pray this evening. Go ahead and pray. Those of you in our soul branches, open your mouth and pray. Find only your agenda will stand in our lives. Can you mention what that agenda is? This is not the time to be quiet. This is a time to pray. Jesus prayed. Jacob prayed. Jacob prayed. Are you praying with focus? Are you praying with faith this evening? Legada Shandalosia Palebo Shikato Shalabagada Bashia. Wherever you are part of this service from, open your mouth and pray this evening. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can you say, May, if you are praying? 
one of the ways we know God's agenda is by the word of God. So this evening, declare this, please. Let your voice be the loudest. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I believe your word. I believe your word. And this year, this year only, your word, only your word. Only what your word says that will come to pass in my life. And that was what Mary said. He said, be it unto me according to your word. Go ahead and pray that. Father, only your word will come to pass. Only what your word says that will come to pass. Someone, are you praying this evening? Only what your word says that will stand. In my life, in my family, only what your word says that will stand. Only what your word says that will stand. This is not a time to look around. This is a time to pray. Only what your word says that we stand. La bagada shanta la bagado shia la bagado rekato shia. Le gada ba shanta la ba la gada ba shia. Le gada ba ra gada shanta la ba yada ba. In our homes, in our career, in our families. Only what God's word says that we stand. Le bagada shanto la baya. Ye ragada ba shanta la bagada ba shanta la ba le gato ya. Somebody pray this morning, this evening rather. Le shala bagada ba shanta la ba la gado shia. Le gada ba ragada shanta la bagada ba shanta la ba ba la ya ba ya. Le kada shanta la bagada shanto le goshia. Le daraba shanta la balagada ba shanta la bayada. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Let me put it in practical terms. I'm sure you'll be able to understand this. When you receive an alert and that alert you are told you have a million naira in your account. Is that isn't it? Yes, sir. And then you get to the bank, you tender a check to withdraw, and you write down what? A millionaire. And then you are given 100,000. What will you do? Talk to me. And then you tell the cashier, no, I have a millionaire in my car. I say, no, we can't give you a millionaire. We can only give you 100,000. What will you do? You will go away. See the way some of you reacted without even. It's just an illustration. You have said, no! It's the same way you are to react against anything that is not in agreement with the word of God. Touch your body and say, I say no to sickness. I say no to sickness. You know why you have to say no to sickness? Because the Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, what happened to you? You are here. So lift up your hand with that same aggression. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not in your word is not permitted in my life. So devil, in the name of Jesus, everything in my life that is not in agreement with the word of God, go! Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever in my life that is not in agreement with the word of God, Whatever is in my life that is not in agreement with the word of God. I reject it. I refuse it. Are you praying this evening? Whatever is in your life that is not in agreement with the word of God. Whatever is your children's life. Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Pray with faith. with intensity (laughs) 
Le shagada shandala bagada shiala bagadora. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can you say good amen? amen? For example, you know your name. Do you know your name? Yes, you know the way to your house? Yes, Come on, is that true? Yes, now, maybe your name is Mary. That is your name. That is the name you bear. Are you there? There's someone who comes and said, Joanna, will you answer? We want to pray something this evening. The Bible said, you will bear the name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. Raise your voice. Please don't pray like a gentleman. Pray like someone ready to fight like Hannah. Hannah had to take a stand against barrenness and barrenness ended. Shout and say, Father, the name of Jesus. Whatever is my identity that is not in agreement with your promise by your word. I can show it. I am blessed by God. I am not cursed. I have received divine head. I cannot be sick. I am a success. I cannot fail. That's what God's word says. From today, only what God's word says that will manifest in my life. Only what God's word says that will be seen in my life and my family. Go ahead and pray that this evening. Only what God's word says. Only what God's word says. You are not a failure. You are not wayward. You are a child of destiny. You are a child of wonders. Are you praying this evening? Le shagadoshi katola bashanda la bagadoshia. Le shagada shanta la bagadoshia. Le shagada bashanta la bagadoshi karoba shanta la baya. What any man has said over you, whatever you are called that is not in agreement with the will of God, shall not stand. You will bear your divine identity. You will answer to your divine name. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. I don't know if the media can give us Psalm 109 verse number 17. And the 18th thing. Psalm 109, 17 and 18. So many years ago, someone said something over me. Lift up your two hands. The Bible told us that Jacob prayed for his sons. Isaac blessed Jacob. Please lift up your two hands wherever you are. Wherever you are part of the service from. Anything any man has spoken over you. Whether in the open or in the secret. That is not in agreement with the word of God. I declare this in agreement with God. To say it shall not prosper. Anything anyone has spoken over your home. Over your marriage. Over your children. That is in conflict with the word of God. With the agenda of God. I declare this evening. It shall not come to pass. It shall not come to pass. Only what God's word says. That will stand in your life. That will stand in your family. Psalm 109 17. And a thing. 
He said, as he loved cousin, I ought to have my NIV, but let's read it. As he loved cousin, the Bible said, Goliath cursed David. Lift up your two hands. Are you aware there are people whose tongues are like serpent? They can curse your children. There are people, they, 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 we watch child. Uh-uh. I stand on this altar. Uh, we will see this marriage will fail. Uh-uh. Never. I declare in the name of Jesus, every evil pronouncement on your life, I reverse it in Jesus' name. Whatever was said over you the beginning of the year that is in conflict with the agenda of God, it shall not stand in Jesus' name. He said, has he Lord cursing? So let it come unto him, not unto you. He said, as he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. There are people, they can, I was told this Sunday, how a woman was saying some things like a venom child of God. There are people, out of the abundance of the heart, the man speaking. Some person, the only thing in their heart is a curse, is a curse, is a curse. Lift up your two hands. I'm standing here not to curse you, but to bless you. In the name of Jesus, 2021, you are blessed. Amen. Your children are blessed. Amen. Your body is blessed. Amen. In health, you are blessed. Amen. In business, you are blessed. Amen. In relationship, you are blessed. Amen. In politics, you are blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In relationship, you are blessed. Amen. In ideas, you are blessed. Amen. Verse 18, now say, verse 18. He said, as he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garment. He, that means this, this individual wore he wear like a dress. A curses. He wear it. There are people like that. And that is why, you know, I trust my wife or something. You can't open your mouth and say anything to her and she will swallow it. She will counter it immediately. It doesn't matter who it's coming from. And I love that. We went to see our children's school. They were in secondary school at that time. And the teacher said something over my son. And my wife reacted. He said, no, don't say that. I love that. Lift up your two hands. I'm standing on this altar. I don't know whether your parents said it. Your teacher said it. Your neighbor said it. Someone you quarreled with said it. I don't know who said it. But as long as it's not God's word, it will not stand. I said it will not stand. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next prayer you are going to pray is this a father in the name of Jesus. This year we go for me and my family, my children, according to your divine agenda. Shout it one more say, Father, in the name of Jesus. This year, my life, my children, my family, my career, we go according. To your divine agenda. Go ahead and pray that this evening. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray that. Go ahead and pray that. La gada shanta la bashika to la bashika to la baya. Le shagada shanta la bagada shanta la bala gada baya. Is somebody praying? Wherever you are part of this service from, open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. In my life, in my family, in my business, in my head, in my finances, only your agenda will stand. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please, I want you to listen to this. You are not just standing here as an individual. You are standing here as an intercessor. As what? I want you to open your mouth. As many of your family members you can remember, call them by their names. Say, Lord, only your agenda will stand in their lives. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Call your husband by name. Call your children by name. Call your siblings by name. Call your parents by name. Will you pray that this evening? Le shaka da shanta la baya. Come on, go ahead and pray. Pray for your husband. Only God's divine agenda will stand. In his life, pray for your wife. 
Only God's divine agenda will stand in our life. Pray for your son. Pray for your daughter. In they are going out, in they are coming in. Only what God has ordained that will stand. Pray that in the name of Jesus. Pray that in the name of Jesus. Pray that in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lekado Shalaba. In February, in March, in April, in May, in June, in July, in August, in September, in October, in November, and in December, and in the year to come. Father, only your agenda will stand in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. I also like you to pray in the neighborhood where you live, in the community where you live. You are going to declare and decree that only the agenda of God will prosper in that community. In that street. In that house. Will you pray as an intercessor? Go ahead and pray that this evening. The house where you live. The community where you live. Will you pray that? He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. When Jerusalem prospers, you will prosper. The evil works agenda of robbers, kidnappers, killers. The evil works of the evil ones shall not prosper over the house you live. Over the community you live. Are you praying in the name of Jesus? Pray that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Two weeks ago, the Lord showed me something that led him to us, calling us to pray this prayer. I want you for one minute, pray this prayer. I don't know, I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. There will be someone that God will impress in your heart to pray for. And if not, and I know there will be, somebody's thought will enter your mind by the Holy Spirit. Pray for that person. But before you do the prayer, I want to say this to you. You will not have a reason to mourn over any of your loved ones. Oh, that is a strong prayer. 2021, I declare you will not have a reason to mourn over your loved ones. In the next one minute, pray for whoever God is directing your thought to. Pray for the person as the hand of the Lord upon the person. Can you pray that prayer? Oh, don't be quiet. Can you pray that prayer? Maybe your younger sister. Maybe your neighbor. Maybe a friend. Maybe your son. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Don't doubt what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Pray for that person. That the year 2021... Evil shall be far from the person. The year 2021, only what God has ordained for the life of the person that will stand. Are you praying? Don't be quiet in praying this prayer. Pray for someone. There is someone God is laying in your heart to pray for right now. Don't keep quiet. Pray for that person. Pray for deliverance. Pray for the salvation of that person. Pray for the salvation of that person. That this year will be the year of salvation. This season, there will be salvation for that person. There will be deliverance. There will be restoration in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Finally, let's pray for Nigeria. The state of Nigeria needs our prayers. Is that true? Yes, sir. We don't know where we are. We are not too sure where we are going. But in Nigeria, only the agenda of God will stand. Like I said, politically, our government, they themselves can't tell us for sure where we are and where we are going. But lift up your two hands, every lover of this nation, and declare, say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up this nation to you. We call upon you that in Nigeria, only your divine agenda that we stand. The demonic agenda of the devil against this nation, against the states in this nation shall not prosper. Go ahead and pray this evening. Go ahead and pray. 
Go ahead and pray for this nation. Are you praying? Father in our nation, Nigeria. Father, let only your agenda. Let your agenda stand in our nation. Your divine agenda in our nation. In all the states of the federation, Lord, let your agenda. Let only your agenda prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Stretch your hand towards this order as we pray this prayer in closing. I'm going to declare the same thing seven times. And I believe we always say amen to it. Amen and amen. One, I declare that in your life and your family, only the divine agenda will go with stand. Again, in your head, your head, only the divine agenda of God will stand. In your going out and in your coming in, only the divine agenda of God will stand. In your children's life, only the divine agenda of God will stand. Lishanda Labashiaba, in your business, in your career path, only the divine agenda of God will stand. Lishala Barega do Shanta Letato Shalabageta Labadegado. All the days of this year, only the divine agenda of God will prosper. I don't know what you are pursuing. I don't know what you are believing God for this year. But I agree with you this time, in the name of Jesus, the, the divine agenda of God will prosper. Finally, I'm declaring this over you as a person. I declare this over you in the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on your head. 2021. And all the days, all the weeks, and all the months of this year, in all that you do, and wherever you go, I declare in the name of Jesus, God's divine agenda will stand in your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you.